it's still Saturday afternoon, I'm at a loose end. I feel like I really want to do something. But the other half of me is like, ah, it's a lazy afternoon. Just sit around. I'm not very good at sitting around. So I have things to do, but it's one of those weird in-between things where you want to do something, but you can't bother to get started. Anyway, so I'm going to try and get started. Um, my friend who gave me all the vintage stuff asked if I could fix a coat for her. And I'm always really happy to fix something if it means someone keeps wearing something. So she's got this fabulous khaki coat, which she's probably had as long as I've had some of my coats. But it needs some work. Uh, yeah, the zip is ripping off the inside. And some of the, I think some of the stitching's going on the insides. Yeah, the stitching is going on the insides of the shoulder seams, which is easy enough to do. So we'll sort that out. It's not much of a job, but it'll kill an afternoon. Let's have a look. I'm sure I saw some loose seams. one there. Right, and she wants me to put a split in the back at the bottom because it's too tight around the hem. So there is already a seam. Yeah. That's easy enough to do I think. This is a well-loved coat. It's in better condition than my old parka, though, I have to say. Although, yeah, it's about the same condition as my old parka. You get, like, frayed edges on the, um, on the cuffs and all sorts. But when you have a coat that you really love, that is just perfect for you, you don't want to get rid of it. So I'm just going to fiddle around and get this back into shape and it will live to fight another day which will be good I love fixing clothes I'm always fixing stuff you know, sewing a seam, adding a button, all that sort of thing I love all that it's just so easy to do when you have basic sewing skills and of course a sewing machine sewing machines help and I used to really struggle trying to do this sort of stuff because I had a, a basic domestic sewing machine. And then when I moved into my studio back in 2015, I had the opportunity to buy a semi-industrial sewing machine from a sewing cooperative. And that's the one I use now. This will sew through anything. It will do leather, multiple layers of denim. It's just amazing. I love it. It's such a good sewing machine. So that's the one I use all the time now. So what do I need? I need matching thread. I always keep a variety of threads to hand. Uh, yeah, we've got two of those pale greens, they'll do. That should probably do the trick. Yeah. Actually, that might be a good blend as well. I might do a blend. You can blend, so you can have one colour in the top and one in the bottom. It should do the job. Anyway, so I'm going to get on with this. And hopefully this will fill my afternoon. Good stuff. I'll move this round and maybe you can... This is some of what I'm going to do. I'll just leave you there if that's alright.
I was also given another jacket, which I would love to keep. It's had something spilt on it, which has made holes. But I think this is way too big for me. Let's try it on. This is about five sizes too big for me. This is a man's, this is Joe Brown. It's absolutely enormous. It's a man's size. But it's got massive pockets. I mean, I could just lose the cuffs entirely. Because it's too long. I lost the cuffs. There. I wonder how big it is when it's zipped up. Let's have a look. I'm thinking about just having like a good walking coat I can just shove everything in the pockets of. I mean it is big, but it's not. It's got loads of pockets. And like proper proper usable pockets. Is it that massive? I can't tell. It doesn't feel that massive. When you've got a nice thick jumper layer on underneath. thick scarf or something. I don't actually think it's that bad. I do need to lose some length on the on the cuffs, but maybe I can use those cuffs to patch up the problem area. There. I could just make a patch, couldn't I? In the matching fabric. Let's have a look. there. Maybe it's an old like walking coat, no one's going to care are they? So I'm tempted to add this to my walking coat collection. This could be quite good for walking up to the, up in the Lake District when I do my car camping trip. Sling this on with all the things I need in the pockets. That could be rather cool. It's just this section here at the back that I need to patch. Hmm. What size is it? Doesn't even say. See another size on it. It's XXL. It's a practical coat, isn't it? That's what it is. It seems a shame to get rid of it just because of one hole in the back. I think we'll lose the cuffs. We'll overlock and fold back the cuffs and sew that in because it's nice and flat. And we'll use these bits. make a fancy section on the back and we match it up with both of them and it'll look like it's part of the design then. Yeah, why not? Let's give that a go, shall we?
that's what I will end up with. And then if I just keep it like that, and then cut down that side, then I'll have a flat. And that could make a decorative piece. I think that's worth the effort. Free coat. A little bit of work. That's enough for one day. Hello. Ooh. It's the next day off camera this morning I did a little bit more work on this coat I've looked at the the bit with the hole and I've done some mending work on that so I'll show you that hold on so what I've done is I cut a bit of spare green fabric and I've glued it just to stop this hole from getting any bigger, it'll just secure it. And now I just need to decide how I'm going to cover that permanently. And given that that's the middle, that's the middle point there, I need to have something that's on either side. So, uh, let me go back to the other view. I took off both the cuffs, and I started doing that yesterday. So I have these two pieces now, and I've re-sewn the open bit back in. And I'm just trying to decide how I'm going to use this to hide the gap, the, um, the damage, and also make it look like it's part of the design of the coat, so it doesn't look too weird. So I'm just going to move you down and show you what I'm thinking of, so you can see the damage there. And what I now have basically is two straps. And what I'm thinking of doing is trying to add it because this here, there is a, a tie running all the way through here. And if I sew through it, it's going to stop that working. So I'm thinking of sewing it a strap here like that or doing it the other way round putting a little fold in the top there so that's attached just at the top edge and then I can have it coming down like that haven't quite decided yet these things when I do them tend to kind of happen on their own um, I think actually it'd be better the other way around because there's a, a hole in there. You could imagine it being a belt like this. So I don't know whether this once had a belt, I'm not sure. So what I might do is if I sew through this side, and you can see that, if I sew like that backwards and then f flip it over, I've pretty much created that. That will cover up the worst of it, and then it will kind of look like, almost like you could put a belt in there. And then this end, I will just fold that and put it like that. And you could imagine that that's like part of the design. So if I do the other one over here the same you can see that and then do the same thing and it almost makes it like a matching pair so now it looks like it's part of a kind of army style design in fact what I could do is just take that whole bit off so that it's just that that will probably be better actually and then I could use these bits for something else so I think I'm probably going to do that. That would make sense. Okay, so. If I fold it like so. I can sew straight through there. I do wonder though whether it would be better like that. What do you reckon? 
maybe like that to the middle. That's going to cover up even more, isn't it? And then I can cover all of that back section up. That's probably going to look more sensible. And I could just sew along that end, and then that would leave that strap running through, through that channel there. I think that's what I'm going to do. I can just about... Yeah, if I have it up to the top, it'll cover as much of that as possible. There'll only be that little fleck showing there. And I can get that to run through on my sewing machine. That may work even better. So, I'm going to tackle that now on my machine. And... Um, I'll show you what that looks like afterwards. So I think that's probably... Wait. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be the best way to do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's clearly not going to be perfect. But it doesn't matter because what I'll have is a wearable coat that's practical and has a new lease of life because this would have ended up probably in the bin if I hadn't taken it well I know it was because I know they were going to throw it away and I think they were offering it to me as a do you fancy some a project do what you like with it
a few days later and my red bias binding has arrived. I've gone for a 30 mil width and I bought a meter because it's usually the minimum you can buy. A nice width to it. Three centimeters is quite big but I want a nice nice edge to this cuff. So, let's get our coat. I haven't done anything to the cuffs since I took the original cuffs off. They're just raw edge at the moment. And I think all I'm going to do itself and then it'll just fold it on itself so I'm going to end up with a funky red edge to my cuff which I think is actually going to look really nice so I'm going to do that now and we'll see how that looks afterwards I'm just going to move you back and then knock you over and then you can hopefully see the overall look as I go so let's get started and Let's see how we get on. Done. So I'll twist that a bit. I think that looks pretty cool. Now there is something else red on here, I think. Let me have a look. Yeah, there's a little red star on there, and that's why I've gone for the red, because I think <laughs> it's starting to look like some kind of Russian military outfit but um, literally it's it's just it's finished off those cuffs really nicely I'm gonna double stitch that but I'm gonna do the next one and then I can double stitch it and then this coat can go into the wash cuffs on my coat now and I think that does the job the back is looks like it has like a belt thing on it now and I think it's a little bit big but I think for like doing hiking and car camping and whatever you have you if I've got like two or three jumpers on like I have now and I have this over the top 
I think that's going to be a really nice um, a nice addition worst ways if not I can sell it I'm sure someone else would like it but I'm going to hang on to this for now I like all the pockets um, and I think uh, this could be a really handy coat so I think I will probably end up taking this with me to the Lake District when I go on my first car camping trip and um, we'll give it a go and see how we get on. hope you found that useful. Um, these sorts of projects are good fun for me. I like these because I'm giving life to something that would otherwise probably have ended up in the bin. This was definitely going to end up in the bin and now I feel like I have something useful. There's just one bit of damage on the inside which is there and I might just use that little bit of leftover um, red tape to make a funny little little addition, something like that, because I've just got that bit on the inside. But I'm not going to worry about that too much. There are all sorts of ways I could patch that. It's right on the inside, and it doesn't affect the way the coat actually works. So that's it. I'm done. I hope you enjoyed that. It's quite a long one. But it goes, it shows you the sort of thing that I do. Anyway, leave your comments. Thank you for watching. Speak to you soon. Bye.